ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان استقى الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد All thanks and praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who we seek his help and we seek forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the mistakes that we have and from our actions that are bad whosoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides none can lead astray and whoever is left astray cannot be guided aright i bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his slave and messenger. Usibkum wa nafsi bi taqwa Allah. I remind you and urge you in the verses that we just read every Jumu'ah to have a sense of God consciousness, to have a sense of knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take us to account that we are being watched and observed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made reference to a group of people where he says kuntum khayru ummati al-ukhrijat lin-nas you are the best of all nations who have been raised for mankind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in the Quran wa kadhalika ja'alnakum ummatan wa satan litakunu shuhada'a 'ala an-nas that we have made such a group that are moderate in nature that are balanced in nature so that you will be a witness over people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the same group of people was sabiqun al awwalun min al muhajirin wal ansar wal ladhina attabu'uhum bi ihsan radiyallahu anhum wa radhu an wa adda lahum jannatin tajri tahtiha al anhar khalidin fiha abada dhalika fawz dhalika al fawz al azim and from the pioneers of the muhajirin those who went from makkah to medina and the ansar those who supported the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in medina and those who followed them exactly in virtue allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with allah this group of people known as the sahaba from which we read and should educate ourselves about them khayru an-nas qarni rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has also said that the best of this generation is my generation than those who follow them and those who follow them the sahaba were the best after the prophets they were the best of creation role models for us to follow names that we should be familiar with and our children should be familiar with abdullah ibn masud radiyallahu anhu described them as what he said kana wallahi afdhal hadhihi ummah they were the best of this nation وَأَبَرَّ قُلُوبًا They had the most righteous hearts. وَأَعْمَقَ عِلْمًا They had the deepest of knowledge. وَأَقَلَّ تَكَلُّفًا They had the least expectations of chasing things. And they had the least, um, um, uh, they, were, they were closer to the Akhirah. They didn't want too much. قَوْمًا أَخْتَارُوا اللَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected these people. They were the ones chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By their virtues. and they were those who were on the straight path that we follow you know when we read stories and we read the quran and we read this book of the quran and the quran is full of stories 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given these stories for a reason. Allah created the human being and He knows how to approach the human being and how the human being learns. learns. There was a social experiment done by a scientist. He bought 10 items from eBay and he bought them for maybe $20 in total. He then took each item, maybe it was a diamond, a, a false diamond, a, an ornament, maybe a lampshade, maybe a notebook. He then wrote a story about each item. Oh, this notebook was my mother's, who gave it to her grandmother, who lived in this village, who lived here, who said this, her character was like this. Each one of those 10 items he sold for five times the price because of the story attached to it. That's the value that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the human psyche. That when you listen to stories and you listen to things, you can link yourself to it. You can make a connection between you and what the Sahaba went through. This connection between learning the lessons the Sahaba had and the lessons you can put in your life. The Sahaba I'm going to talk about today very quickly. And this will not do any justice to the Sahabi. It will not do any justice to him. <coughs> For indeed, it takes a course maybe to cover the lives of these people. <coughs> One of the greatest Sahaba and described by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said, trees have not shaded or the dirt has not carried a man on this earth more truthful in speech than him. He said about this individual, if you want to know about the humility of Jesus, if you want to know about the humility of Isa alayhi salam, look at this individual. Who was this man? Known to us, his long name was Jundub ibn Janada, ibn, ibn Sufyan, ibn Ubaid, ibn Haram, ibn Ghifar, known by his kunya Abu Dhar al Ghifar, from the tribe of Ghifar. <coughs> And the tribe of Ghifar, they were not from the farmers, they were not from the Tujjah. SubhanAllah, those who are brothers who are reverts, you know, when you have a colorful background, you will connect and you will see certain things that Allah gives you hidayah, and you are sitting in this masjid for a reason. This tribe was a tribe of pirates and bandits and criminals. This is what their job was. They used to be on the outskirts of Medina, um, attacking the tribe that would come from Iraq, or the, or, the, or the caravans that will come from Iraq and those who come from Mecca to Medina, they will rob them. And Abu Dhar grew up in this environment. But it never settled in his heart. He said a spade was a spade, what's wrong is wrong. It never settled in his heart. And in those days, you know, your tribe was everything. Your protection was your tribe. You would never leave your tribe. But he left with his brother and he left with his mother. And he used to say in, later on, Abu Dhar used to say, three years before I met Rasulullah, I used to pray to Allah, I used to beg for guidance. And then he used to ask him, the Sahaba, how did you do this? You didn't know Islam, you didn't know Rasulullah. He said, I would pray at night, and I would put my head down on the ground, and my cloak would fall over me, and I would just keep begging for guidance and help until I could feel the sun shine coming onto my back in the morning. His mother and his brother accompanied him to Mecca. And because they were not with any tribal protection, this is a Qaba'ili society, they st were staying in the outskirts of Mecca. And his brother Unais, anhu, said, go into Mecca and find out what's going on in Mecca. Maybe we can live there, maybe we could do something there. So he went to Mecca and he came back and he went to Abu Dhar and he said, Ya Abu Dhar, I met a man in Mecca who is telling, who, who, who has things which you, which you have in your mind too, who are similar to you. He's teaching people about makarim al akhlaq not to tell lies, not to be deceitful, to help one another, to have good character. And Abu Dhar said that day, he said, what? Abu Dhar said, what are the people saying about him? He said, the people are calling him a magician or a poet. And Ulay said, I am a poet. And Ulay was a poet, he was, he was proficient in poetry. He said, I know what poetry is. And he is telling the truth, for, and the people are lying. Abu Dhar was excited that there's a man calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, that feeling you get when you're searching for the haq 
all your life. You know those brothers and sisters who never drank even when they were non-Muslims, who couldn't eat pork, it didn't sit well with them, they couldn't go clubbing, it didn't go well with them. That connection came for Abu Dhabi. So he went to Mecca. And at that time, Islam was kept in secret. And he hid himself in Mecca. And he used to walk around to see where is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Until Ali radiallahu anhu, who was a child at the time, spotted him and said, this guy is strange in this area. And he asked him, what are you doing here? You come from another area. And he said, I will tell you only if you keep this as a promise. Don't tell anybody. I want to see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he took him. He took him to Rasulullah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, I am Abu Dhar. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put his hand over the head. He said, oh, those who do the robberies and the pirates. And he said, I never imagined somebody from those people would come searching for the haq. Abu Dhar asked him, what is this speech that you are saying? What is this Quran that you claim to have from Allah? And he recited verses to him, and Abu Dhar accepted shahada, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, straight away. He was told, keep your deen a secret. Right now we are under pressure, we are being persecuted. Go back to your qawm and teach them deen al-haq. But Abu Dhar was so pleased with this deen. He said, no way. I will shout from the top of my voice in the, in the outskirts of the Kaaba for people to know, La ilaha illallah. He was so overjoyed by this truth that came into his heart. He left his house, he went to the Kaaba, he left Rasulullah, went to the Kaaba, and he called the people, La ilaha illallah. And those people used to call them Asabi. They used to call the people who changed their religion, Sabi, Sabi Umun. He said, Get this Sabi, get this Sabi Umun. And they got him and they beat him. They beat him to a point where he was covered in blood that he was described as a nasab and a nasab is the thing where they used to sacrifice their sheep for the idols that kind of wooden block full of blood and they were about to kill him this was the enmity to the haq they were about to kill him and Abbas anhu came he said do you know who this man is? do you think you will kill this guy and get away with what his tribe will do with you? They will come and rob you day and night. They will not spare anything for you. And they will come and get his revenge. So they released him. He picked himself up, went back to his people, recovered, and then taught his qabila Islam. He taught his tribe about Islam. He went to his brother before that who accepted Islam. He went to his mother before that who accepted Islam. And they went back to the tribe and taught them. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa years passed, the migration came from Mecca to Medina. And he went to say, I will go to Medina too, Abu Dhar said. So he, half of his tribe converted. At the time when he was given da'wah, as the news came of Rasulullah entering Medina, the other half converted to Islam. And the neighboring tribe, Al-Aslam, they converted into Islam as well. And then when they saw Abu Dhar al-Ghafari coming to Medina with a massive delegation of people, Rasulullah said, Sallam Allah, that may, about the tribe of Aslam, uh, as, the, the tribe of Aslam, may Allah give you each peace. And Abu Dhar, radiallahu anhu, and he said about, uh, and he said about Abu, Abu Dhar, about Ghafar, Ghafar Allah, that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you from, from the tribe of Ghafar. And may Allah give you like a dua for them using the names of Aslam and Ghifar. <coughs> Abu Dhar stayed in Medina with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, serving him, learning from him, learning what he was taught, sleeping in the masjid, learning the ilm, until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. <coughs> and when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, he used to report this hadith. And Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, he will report this hadith by saying the words, Awsani Khalil, my beloved friend, advised me with these seven things. <coughs> and he said, the things that Rasulullah taught me were, have, ta have taqwa, for it is the head of all your offense. It is the most key part of your advice. He says, Zidni, give me more knowledge. 
He says, Alayka bi talawat al Quran wa dhikrillah. Upon you is to recite the Quran and do kathrat al dhikr. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fa inahu nuru laka fil ardi wa zukru laka fil samai. For it is, it is light for you on this earth and a treasure for you in the heavens. He says, Zidni. He said, Iyaka kathrat al dhahak, yamitu al qalb. He said, Don't laugh too much. For it deadens the heart. Don't joke all the time. Don't be a joker all the time. It deadens the heart. Be a serious man. He says, Zidni. He said, Alayka bi jihad. For here, Ruhbaniyatu ummati. For it is the monkhood. It is the ascetism of my being of this faith to give up this world for the akhirah. The ultimate dedication. He says, Zidni. Alayka bi tool as samat. He said, upon you is to stay quiet for a long time. For it is something that can push away shaitan if you just keep your mouth shut. And it will help you in your affairs of your deen to keep quiet. He says, Zidni, Ahabul Masakin wa Jalisukum. Like the poor people. Like the poor people. Know about the poor people. Make dua for the poor people. Sit with the poor people. He says, Zidni is an umdur man tahtak wa la tandur man fawqa. Look at those people who are below you, not to the people who are above you chasing the dunya all the time. Look at those who have less than you so that you're grateful for the best blessings and the ni'mah that we live in. He says, Zidni, he says, speak the truth even if it is bitter. Later on, Abu Dhar al Ghifari radiallahu anhu would say, Law kuntum ta'lamuna ma a'lam, if you knew what I knew, if you knew what I knew, you would not be intimate with your spouses. And you would not even sleep in your beds for fear of what you would have to face on Yom Al-Qiyam. Then he said, I wish I had been created and just made as a tree that I would just have been chopped up and used so that I wouldn't be taken into account on Yom Al-Qiyam. Abu Dhar was one of the greatest companions, dear brothers. But they also made mistakes. The Sahaba made mistakes which were recorded for us to learn from. And I'm going to make one reference to one before I close this first part of the khutbah. And it is pertinent because in this month we have around the UK Black History Month. And those of you who know the seerah will know the incident I'm going to refer to. It was a point where there was a quarrel between Abu Dhar al-Ghifari and Bilal radiallahu anhumah. They had a quarrel, they had a conflict. Like all humans do, we have problems, we have issues, we have ups and downs. But they got into an argument and Abu Dhar said, you son of a black woman. That's what he said. And Bilal radiallahu went straight to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, look what he is saying to me. Rasulullah became angry and called for Abu Dhar to come to him. That one would say something of jahiliyyah. إِنَّكَ إِمْرُونْ فِيكَ جَاهِلِيَّةِ In you is a characteristic of ignorance. Within you there is still some ignorance, Rasulullah said. You still have some of this in you. Judging someone by the skin. Judging someone by the color of their skin. Or their ethnicity. Or their race. What matters is in the inside. إِنَّ أَكْرَمُكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ This is how our Islam was. Not judged on race and color but judged on your taqwa and your actions. A big lesson for racism and tribalism and jahiliyyah in this aspect, that we unfortunately still have this disease amongst us living in this country and even more so back home in your home countries. Rasulullah taught the Sahaba, he spent time with the Sahaba, spent months and years teaching them, eradicating these diseases in their hearts. Because we are all from the children of Adam. And Adam was from dust. And we have nothing to be arrogant about. Like the Hajj. When Rasulullah said to them, there's no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab or a black over a white or a white over a black. This is the same Hajj that Malcolm X in his book when he wrote, he said that I have, uh, he was a black supremacist. That's what he was when he went to Hajj. When he went to Hajj and what he saw, blue-eyed blondes next to black Africans doing Salah, snoring in the same language, eating together from the same plate. What did he say? Something I thought I, I, that could never happen. 
He said, I could never imagine seeing this. And America needs Islam, for this is the one religion that eradicates racism. In fact, anyone who goes by this code of conduct of race and color is following the footsteps of shaitan. Because shaitan refused to bow down to Adam, not because he said to Allah, Oh, uh, Iblis said, Oh, I have been your best worshiper, oh Allah. I have done more ibadah than him. Why do I have to bow to him? No, he didn't say that. He said, you created him from mud, and he created me from fire as if he is better. That was the sin. That was the mistake. So Rasulullah reprimanded Abu Dhar. And then Abu Dhar did what? This is the difference between you and me and them. What did he do? He cried. He did tawbah. He ran back to Bilal and he begged for his forgiveness. He wasn't stuck up or stubborn or a stiff upper lip or couldn't have humility to say sorry to somebody. Like you find people here, right? They have a problem with their father, I'm not speaking to my father. Have a problem with their mother, I'm not speaking to my mother. Have a problem with my brother, I'm not speaking to my brother. Stuck up and arrogant for what? You think Allah is going to forgive you when you cannot even have humility to accept your mistake and ask for forgiveness from the next man? This was the way of the Sahaba. They made a mistake and they stopped and they changed. They didn't live in their mistake and wallow in their mistake. They said, we made a mistake, we do tawbah and we move on. That's the Muslim, that's the believer. So he had humility and he went back to Rasulullah and he said, I asked for forgiveness from Bilal and, I am, and he promised never to go back to that action again. Astaghfirullah wa lakum wa al mu'mineen wa astaghfirullah الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا إلى يوم الدين. In the ninth year of Hijrah, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم was preparing an army to fight the Romans. This is the second fight with them. And this was going to be a fight in summer. And they were munafiqeen. They were munafiqeen hypocrites. Those who apparently show Islam, but inside they don't believe. That's munafiq. And when this battle was in summer, the journey was, the journey was particularly difficult to Tabuk. Many of them would duck. Many would start the journey. Oh, I'm ill. Then they would go back. And they would keep coming back to Rasulullah. Oh, this sahaba has gone back. Or oh, this individual has gone back. And Rasulullah would always say, if he has gone back, leave him. Perhaps it's good for us. At the back of the caravan that was going on to face the Romans was Abu Dhar because he had an old and weak camel. Until the distance between him and the army became fairly large, maybe half a day's distance. And then his camel collapsed and Abu Dhar was faced with a decision. Whether to go back to save himself, because there's no water in the middle of the desert, go back to Medina or to march forwards. Abu Dhar took the saddle off the camel, put it on his back, and he ran to the army ahead of him, almost half a day of running. When they saw him running from a distance, they didn't know who it was. Rasulullah said, I hope this is Abu Dhar. This is what Rasulullah said. La'allahu Abu Dhar, perhaps this is Abu Dhar who's coming from, this, from, from the horizon. And when they saw him, they found him exhausted, shattered. And Rasulullah sallallahu said, Yarhamullah Abu Dhar. May Allah have mercy on Abu Dhar. Yamshi wahdan, he walks by himself. Yamut wahdan, he will die by himself. Wa yab'atu wahdan, and he will be raised by himself. This was the spirit of Abu Dhar to march forward. This is not a religion for the lazy. This is not for those who are heedless. This is not for those chasing this dunya. Men and women who know their purpose in this life will always march forward to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will not allow anything to come in that way to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Years passed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. History continued. Abu Dhar al-Ghafari went to Syria, Bilal al-Sham. And then he came back to Medina. And then he used to live on the outskirts of, the, of Medina to keep away from people and kalam and everything. He wanted to be a little bit away from everybody. And he lived there with his khadima, with his servant and his wife, alone. And he was, became, became old and frail and he was on his deathbed. And his wife was weeping. She said, who will do the janazah for you? You know, this wasn't 
people could see the signs of somebody passing away, their soul going. They, she said, who will do your janaza? Look where we are, we're in the middle of nowhere. Who will do your janaza? He said, when I die, wrap up my body and put it on the highway. Somebody will pass by and they will stop and they will do janaza for me, don't worry. And he passed away. And she, bare, and she shrouded the body and she placed him on the highway. A caravan came down from Iraq. And in this caravan was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud anhu. And he come off the camel and he said, who is this body here in this area? She said to him, this is Abu Dhar al Ghifal. He said, Sadaqa Rasulullah. Sadaqa Rasulullah who said, you will walk alone, nobody could follow you. And you will die alone and you will be raised alone. He got off his camel and he did the janazah and that was the end of Abu Dhar al Ghifal. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq and understanding of the lives of these real men that existed in the history of this world. The men that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for us to know about, study, and relate to in order to change ourselves. They were men, they breathed the air, they lived on this earth, they were not angels. Allah chose anbiya from human beings to be real examples for us so that we can change. We should set our goals high. Our standards should be the ones that we follow the Sunnah and the Sahaba to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us khair, give us understanding of these stories to impact on our lives, inshallah ta'ala. Allahumma aslih ahwal al-Muslimin. Allahumma raddahum ilayka raddan jameela. Allahumma farid ham al-mahmumin min al-Muslimin wa nafis karb al-makrubin. Waqtid dayna al-madhineen wa shfil mardana wa marda al-Muslimin. اللهم اجعل اخواننا اللهم اجعل اخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان من كل هم فرج ومن كل ضيق مخرج ومن كل بلاء عافي ومن كل عسر يسرى يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا الا غفرته ولا هم الا فرجته ولا دين الا قضيته ولا مريضا الا شفيته ولا مبتليا الا عافيته ولا حاجة من حواج الدنيا والآخرة هي لك رضا ولا لا فيها صلاح الا يسرتها وقضيتها يا رب العالمين اللهم من أراد ومن أرادنا وأراد إسلامنا وأمننا بسوء اللهم فاشكله في نفسي واجعل كيده في نحري واجعل تدبيره تدميرا علي اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين في الصراط